Hello and welcome back to London Cycle Routes. Today I'm going to show you how to cycle from Lewisham in South East London to Westminster in Central London. If that sounds like a long way, believe it or not you can actually do it in about 45 minutes to an hour depending on how fast you cycle and it's all on really nice quiet streets or protected bike lanes and it's actually pretty difficult to get lost as well if you watch this video. So let's go! We're going to start on uh, Thurston Road, just around the back of Lewisham Railway Station. Um, we're on this um, pretty old protected cycle lane. It's not very well designed, to be honest, um, but it does the job. Make sure you watch out at side roads um, to make sure that there aren't any cars driving over it. Then we turn right and you go through this little tunnel here under the southeast main line. That's the railway above us and uh, through the car park and what we're doing here is we're getting to a river trail um, and that's here so believe it or not we're actually alongside the river Ravensbourne that's on our right on the right of that wall um, it's not the most picturesque view of the river but you know it'll do um, and yeah this is all car free here um, this is a pretty old route um, it was designed as part of the old London cycle network and you know it's of variable quality but it does do the job um, you go here past uh, Elverson Road Station and into the park here, Brookmill Park. And uh, yeah, you can see there's a sort of green surface on the cycle bit and uh, then pedestrians are supposed to keep to the other side. In practice, that doesn't always happen, so yeah, do watch out. Um, there's also a lot of quite bad blind corners here, so I wouldn't go too quickly, um, especially considering people are likely to wander into the lane. Um, but you know, keeps us off the road. Um, and yeah, if there's a cyclist coming the other way as well, um, it might get a bit tricky to let them pass you. This is probably the lowest quality part of the route, and I don't think it's been updated in like several decades. Um, maybe it's one for the council to look at and improve. But yeah, it's probably nicer than riding on the road. So uh, we're going this way. Um, this little bit here is shared with pedestrians, so do be careful. And then as we emerge here, that on stilts above us is the Docklands Light Railway. Uh, weaving above us on that sort of concrete overpass. Now this little bit is counterintuitive, you actually go left even though the green path goes right, you are allowed to go this way and then we'll emerge onto a joint pedestrian and cycle crossing. Um, it's a two stage crossing so you need to go across this bit, stand on the island and wait. This is really badly done um, but you know keeps us away from the traffic and then we rejoin this slightly better cycle path on Deptford Bridge um, it only stays slightly better for a very short period of time before degenerating into it looks like it's been there since like the 1840s or something like that. Yeah, that's bouncy. Sorry about the camera work. And then we come down here onto a little road called Creekside, which is a very nice name for a road. Um, it's called that because it goes alongside Deptford Creek, which is a little creek going into the Thames that you might have seen on the map. Um, and yeah, again, not very well surfaced but you won't see any cars here. Um, now um, this little section of the route is significant because we are joining a, uh, a TFL signposted route called Quiet Way 1. Um, so from now on we can follow the symbol Q1 on the road um, and you can see this is actually probably the best done Quiet Way in the whole of London. There's loads of bollards basically to make it traffic free or extremely low traffic. By the way, here um, you just cross the road as a pedestrian. It's That bit is under construction. Um, there's no right way to do that, I don't think. But yeah, um, th there's a, there is a little bit of building work going on around here actually at the moment. Um, but yeah, we're following Q1. And this here is, again, someone's parked a van there and there's some building work. So we just dodge around it. It's not really a problem. Um, you go down Deptford High Street very briefly and then join Hamilton Street and you go into the estate and uh, part of the quiet way, again following the Q1 symbols, there is a really really nice little cycle track here that's beautifully surfaced, it looks like something out of the Netherlands. Um, and yeah, there's a crossing here. Um, you might notice that that car gave way. Um, to be honest, it's not, I, I wouldn't rely on cars giving way there. It looks like a zebra crossing but I think um, different motorists will interpret a bike being there differently so yeah do watch out. Um, we head here into Clyde Street and that takes us into these nice gardens Evelyn Green. Again no cars, bollards, brilliant and you head down Childers Street and uh, a lot of the route really is like this it's kind of roads that 
shouldn't have too much traffic on them because they've usually been sort of blocked off at one end um, or they're sort of cul-de-sacs and they don't really go anywhere for cars but they do go somewhere for bikes and look at that the sun has come out as well um, isn't that nice um, so here yeah we're again we're just following the Q symbols on the road and that means we go left here on, on this unnamed road as far as I can tell under another railway bridge and into Folkestone Gardens now if you wanted to go to New Cross you would have kept going straight on there but we're not we're following the Q1 route so we got up here this is a park and it's shared with pedestrians so my usual uh, warning about you know just uh, just be considerate and uh, enjoy the park now this crossing coming up here is dangerous um, just look both ways just don't zoom right across it um, and also there are side roads um, basically leading onto industrial estates so you know lorries and other vehicles with low visibility might just be pulling it out at random um, but we're on here on this path on Surrey Canal Road this is a shared path with pedestrians but because of its location you rarely see many pedestrians on it um, I wouldn't normally endorse a shared path with pedestrians they're not usually very nice to ride on but this does have a pretty nice riding surface and um, yeah it's there's such a low footfall on it that it's actually pretty good um, you keep going here until Senegal way no Senegal Road and you go straight up and uh, football fans might notice that that is the den on the left there that's Millwall's ground and we're going behind the den uh, on the Millwall path and uh, yeah this is again shared with pedestrians but um, you won't find too many on there and you'll usually find quite a lot of bikes um, I believe that on match days this path is actually used for access to the stadium and there's also a set and the reason for the security fencing is because away fans are separated around here as well um, so there might be disruption on match days at very specific times uh, but, but I've never come down here on match day so I don't know um, that was South Bermondsey Station when we went past the way. You can see we're making great time. I mean, we've barely seen any motor traffic at all on this entire route. We've even got our own little bridge here, which is brilliant. Leads us into this uh, sort of 80s, 90s looking housing estate. Stubbs Drive. Now, you can get lost here if you go the wrong way. And the trick is just to follow the Q1 cycle symbols pretty religiously. Um, or just memorise where I go in the video, because I get it right first time here. Um, there's a little bin lorry here and we just cheekily weave around that um, but generally you won't see any traffic here because you can sort of see how it's designed there are these different streets that are connected up only with cycle paths between them um, and that's a, that's basically a classic low traffic neighbourhood um, you know th this is what in suburbia you would call a cul-de-sac but not for bikes it isn't a cul-de-sac for bikes you can go between it and that's really handy for us because it creates a really lovely route with basically the only cars you're going to see here are deliveries and um, people pulling into their own driveways and when people pull into their own driveways they're usually pretty careful because their own kids might be playing here and yeah we just keep going straight through here that's lovely to see yeah it's it's such an easy route that there's kids uh, cycling very small kids in fact and yeah we go through here through the bollards I actually think this is just a really nice route. It's just nice to see a bit of London that you probably wouldn't actually see unless you lived here for any other reason. Um, it's a pretty dense residential street. There's not really any shops here. Um, you'd probably have no reason to come here unless you are cutting through on a bike. And we're still religiously following those Q1 symbols. Um, you'll come up to these lights here. They're a sort of um, cyclist height traffic lights as well. And you keep going. Willow Walk, that's quite a nice name for a road, isn't it? And by the way, if you find this video useful uh, or you enjoy it, uh, please do like it on YouTube. It does make a difference, helps other people find it. And also subscribe to the channel. Um, hit the subscribe button down there. Um, that will help you find it in future. And it will help other people find it in future. I do loads of videos like this. Um, yeah, I'm planning to do pretty much all the routes. So, yeah. <laughs> um, this bit is a bit annoying. There was a van here. Uh, but, I mean, it's notable because that was pretty much the only motor vehicle that we've actually had any problems with on the entire route. You can see how traffic-free this really is. Um, it's genuinely really nice, and there's a lot of cyclists out. This is interesting here. We're about to cross Tower Bridge Road, 
and I think that's one quite nice thing about these quiet back street routes because even if you know London pretty well you probably don't recognize the streets we're going on so when you cross a major road like that you go oh that's where I am we've already come this way um, so yeah we went across, we've already got gone past Tower Bridge and uh, we'll be popping up in, on Blackfriars Road in a second which is uh, which is extremely deep into central London but for now uh, we're pretty religiously following these Q1 symbols. And uh, if you've got any ideas for routes you'd like to see me do in future videos, by the way, do let me know in the comments below and uh, I will do my best. With the weather getting a bit nicer, I'm hoping to, you know, get out on the bike even more. You can see here, by the way, that there's a sort of contraflow cycle lane uh, on this otherwise one-way street. Uh, that was on the right there. Um, this route is entirely symmetrical, so you can go in this direction you can go back on exactly the same streets in the other direction now this bit here is a bit annoying uh, there's a gate here and you have to navigate it it's pretty uh, irritating but it leads you onto this beautiful square Trinity Church Square one of the nicest squares in London um, so it is worth it and across Trinity Street now here we are crossing Borough High Street so yeah that's another road you might recognize and Great Suffolk Street and then we are crossing I believe there's a Southwark Bridge Road coming up here so yeah we're sort of racking up big name roads and then onto Weather Street now this bit um, some people might find it a bit controversial the way we're going if you are a little bit more confident on your bike you could just go straight on here and sort of work your way past Waterloo to get straight over Westminster Bridge um, you don't have to be, you know, a daredevil to do that. But I try and keep these videos um, sort of comfortable for all abilities of cyclist. So instead of going straight on here, we're going right onto Blackfriars Road because there's a really good protected bike lane here. And we're basically just going to go straight down this absolutely fantastic um, protected track. And we're going right past Southwark Tube Station here. That's how central we are. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to go over Blackfriars Bridge. Uh, we're going to use that to get over the Thames, which, as you'll see on the map at the end, is a little bit of a detour, but it actually only adds a couple of minutes, and it is a much, much nicer ride than trying to pit your way around Waterloo. There have been some improvements in Waterloo recently, but um, I just don't think it's quite there yet for me to recommend that as a route for, you know, every ability cyclists. So yeah, we're on the bridge here. Make sure you have a look at the view. It is beautiful. You go straight through those security barriers. And yeah, there's a bit of a hill going up on the bridge. It is an arched bridge. And fast down the other side. And if you've got a green light here, I would say take it because it is annoying. And there's a very sharp turn left down here. And we're heading, as you might guess if you know the area well, onto the embankment cycleway um, this is a, a really brilliant place to ride um, we wait for the lights here and cross there's, there's always loads of people like you can see I mean this is not a this is a sort of February day um, it's pretty cold and yeah it's absolutely rammed with cyclists you, you're going past them all the time I said that and then they all disappeared but you will see one in a second there's another there's another um, and yeah they'll keep coming and this takes us along the Thames all the way to Westminster and you don't have to worry about traffic the entire way. As I say, the alternative is you can go sort of via Waterloo Station and cross at Westminster Bridge. There are a lot of changes planned to Westminster Bridge. There's going to be a new cycle track on there. Maybe there'll be some changes around Waterloo itself, but for now it's a little bit inhospitable, I think. Um, we're going under Waterloo Bridge here, by the way. Um, that's, that's, that bridge isn't really an option. Uh, for crossing the river for us because it, it sort of comes in at a different level it doesn't actually go to the embankment it kind of joins at the strand which isn't the way we want to come because we want to get on this lovely little cycleway you can see the London Eye looming there on the left so we're pretty close and yeah if you know Westminster at all you know we're, we're getting pretty close here um, the reason that these construction walls are up close by the way is I think it's because they're building a new sewer here 
um, a super sewer. Um, but the, the diversion that they have built is actually pretty good. So often when there's construction work, the diversion for cyclists isn't great. But I think because this is a sort of flagship cycle lane for Transport for London, they insisted on it being pretty good. And there's Big Ben looming in the background, covered in scaffolding. Um, and we're getting extremely close here. And of course the House of Parliament, and you just wait for the lights here, they can take a while. And we're on Parliament Square. So if you enjoyed this video or you found it useful, then please do subscribe to the channel. Um, I do loads of videos like this, and yeah, you can expect more of the same. Um, and I'll bring the map up again for you as well. You can see just to the east of our destination there, we took a little bit of a detour because we wanted to go over Blackfriars Bridge instead of Westminster Bridge because it's a nicer ride. Realistically, it only really adds a couple of minutes to the journey. It's a lot nicer, but if you're even moderately confident on the road, you can probably just go straight on there, work your way around Waterloo. Um, it can get a little bit hairy at the junctions on the big roundabout there. Um, I think TfL has got some improvements planned. I'm not sure that it will be uh, com still completely connected up when those are done, but maybe one day that will be the best way to go. But for now, I, I recommend just going by Blackfriars. It is a nice ride. Right, thanks very much guys, and uh, yeah, see you next time.